Welcome back to the Subspace Games YouTube channel. Today we're going to be changing the game a little bit so that we can go in and move our objects around. And so let's jump right in. Um, first of all, though, I want to jump back to the code that I had from the last video. And I made a change um, because I noticed an issue, and that was, um, you know, on the on toggle camera. Um, whenever we were toggling back and forth from aim mode to or chase mode to overhead, um, because I didn't put in this if statement to check whether or not we were editing, then anytime you went to overhead mode, then the the uh, cursor became visible. So all I did is I came in and I just um, um, added this in um, so that we want to make sure that when we're switching over to overhead mode we check to see if we're editing first and if we are then we'll make the cursor visible otherwise we won't anyways just wanted to clear that up and didn't want to leave an error from the last video unfixed so let's jump in um, basically we, what we want to do is um, we're gonna set it up so that when we're in overhead mode and we go into that editing mode then we have the ability to go and move objects uh, within the scene so that when we launch the ball um, we can ricochet it off the objects and get to the end or to the goal so to do that let's jump into the code and the first thing I want to do is I'm going to set up a new AI um, create we'll call this movable movable AI and what this is going to be is um, any object that we want to to be movable we're going to attach this AI to it and it'll it'll cause it so that we can move the item around so the first thing we're gonna do is we'll set up a variable that is movable it's a boolean and we'll set it by default it's going to be true and then we also want to set up Let's see, what else are we going to need? Let's also put a handle to the actual object. So, object, which is an object. Click OK, and no, we don't want a state, we want a handler. We'll do the on init, and in the on init handler, we're going to do the typical stuff where we say that the object references. Um, the actual object that the AI is assigned to. So we'll get that first. And that should do it for that for now. We'll come back to that um, in a minute. But let's go ahead and jump over to the, the aim cam. And the first thing in the aim cam that we'll do is we're going to change it so that when we do the on mouse button down, we want it to, if it's an object that can be movable and we're in edit mode, we want the, the clicking on the mouse button to do something different than what it was doing before. So let's modify the code here. All right, so let's move that down a little bit. Let's insert some code here. So we're creating a Boolean value, value which is movable, and we're going to set that to false right off the bat. This is separate than the one that we had in the, uh, in the uh, movable AI. So this is just a local variable. Then we're also setting a, or creating a local variable that will be, we're going to do some ray casting, um, and we're, the object that we end up hitting with our ray is going to be this hit object right here. So let's put in a little bit more code. Uh, we got quite a bit here. All we're doing is that we're checking, well, I should go back and say that this is all if the ball is not in play. So. Um, none of this is going to happen if the ball is actually moving, but if it's not in play, then we're also going to come in here and check to see, okay, if it's not in play and we're not in editing mode, let's grab the local, the current scene, and then we're going to uh, use this function here, which is get first hit collider. So this is a ray cast. Um, we're sending, a, basically, if you can imagine this, uh, like a laser shooting into the scene, and we're trying to find out what object this laser hits. Um, and because we already have in our on mouse button down, we already have some ray stuff. The, um, the handler um, already gives us some ray information. Um, it does that so that when you click on the screen somewhere, 
because it's a three-dimensional world and we have a two-dimensional screen, it, it basically shoots a ray into the screen to see which object that it ends up hitting. So we can take that, those, um, basically what it is, is it's the X, Y, and Z coordinates that it, that it is, that it represents in the game where the mouse is clicked. And then there's also this direction. So this is a vector that says, okay, this is the point we're at. And here's the direction that, that we're going in. And then the last thing is how far do we want to go? I just set it to 100 um, just to make sure that we get everything. So what is it doing? It returns, if you look up here at the top of the screen, it returns a bunch of stuff. It returns the object that was hit, uh, the distance that it took to get there, and then the surface ID, which we're not going to worry about. In fact, we're not worrying about the distance either. We're just worried about the object. So we cast a ray in using the um, arguments that we get from the on mouse button down event and we're going to get this object back. Now we're check this make sure that the object is not nil. Um, it's possible that we cast the array into the scene that doesn't hit anything. So as long as we have an object to work with then we're going to um, uh, declare this string value which is going to get the name of the AI that's assigned to that object that's get a AI model name at. So you put the object in there and then the index. So you could have multiple AI attached to a, an object, but we're always going to be dealing with this movable AI. Um, I've already made the commitment to myself that if I assign multiple AIs to an object, the movable one will go first. So I'm going, I'm going to go ahead and hard code the zero in there. So it returns the string value of the name of the AI. And then if that's not nil, we finally get to the meat and potatoes here, and that is that we are going to check the AI variable within this object, in this AI. We're going to check the B movable one. So that's the variable that would determine whether or not the object can be moved. So if it can, then it's going to assign um, true to B movable. And that's where we want to be um, so that we can make sure that the object that we're clicking on is actually movable. So let's come down a little bit further and insert some more code. Okay. So now we're going to check that movable uh, Boolean value. And if, if it is movable, um, then I went ahead and threw this in here just for some logging, just to make sure that uh, things are working right. So we'll log the message that the object is movable. And I've created two variables here within the AI that we need to go back and actually add. But basically, we're going to have a handle to the movable object, and then we're also going to um, set a Boolean value to true, saying that, yes, currently we are in the process of moving an object. And then we have this else, so that uh, if we're not in editing mode, then we want this other stuff to happen, which was just that we're launching the ball. So let's go ahead and tab that over, and we'll throw the end in here just to make that work. Um, now let's add these these variables in before we go any further, just so I don't forget. So we had one which is, um, was it movable object? I believe it was. Moving, moving object. Okay. So this is the object that object that we're moving, and it's an object value. Click OK. Add another one. This is a boolean value for moving object. This is. So we can check whether or not we are actually moving an object at the time. And for this one, the default's gonna be false. Click OK. All right, so I think we are all set up. So once again, we get the object, we get its um, AI, and then we check to see whether or not it is a movable object. If it is, then we store the values into the um, these variables over here. And that should do it for this function, well, event handler, whatever. So let's compile, make sure everything works.